What's up everyone? The number one thing that people always ask me for is live trades, live trades, live trades. And I'm happy to announce that we're gonna start showing more live trades, but we're gonna start this one off with a bang. So this was a $145,000 profit in just one day trading the meme stocks. So before I start, I'm gonna log into my broker statement to show you how I'm doing for the year so far. So the broker that I use is called Success Trader, and the clearing firm that they use is called Hilltop Securities. So I'm gonna log into Hilltop's website, going to go to my account here, Tennis Capital Inc., go to gains and losses, we're going to go to realized, and just in this current month, it's about a $600,000 profit, let's do year date, so year to date, you guys can see about $1.3 million on August 30th, 2022. And this does not include the $145,000 trade. So it's closer to about $1.5 million so far this year in a bear market. So this is my broker statement. Uh, it's not a screenshot. So now that you guys have seen that, let's go on to the live trade. So before I begin, let me explain the setup that I'm going to be trading here on Bed Bath & Beyond. So if you see the daily chart here, you can see that it had its first initial run up, right? This was running up on Ryan Cohen buying the stock. And the dump happened when Ryan Cohen and the CFO and all these insiders sold the stock. There was rumors going around that the company was going to go bankrupt. And what ended up happening is Bed Bath & Beyond released a PR statement of a forward looking event that says they have some way to avoid bankruptcy. So this is a sell the new setup. So what ends up happening is the stock runs up in anticipation of this PR and the day of the PR, or in this case, the day before the PR actually comes out, the stock tends to fade. So this has already been a three day run, which is up almost 50% in three days. So keep in mind, this stock has already made its parabolic move and I'm trading from the short side. So I think that long bias traders are stuck and they're looking for some sort of exit. So my plan on this stock is I'm looking for this morning gap up to be rejected. The reason why I'm looking for this gap up to be rejected is because I think everyone thinks that the sell the new setup is going to happen tomorrow. And because everyone thinks it's going to happen tomorrow, smart money is going to exit the stock today into the volume and into the gap up. So my thesis is the sell the new setup is going to happen one day earlier because everyone is expecting it to happen tomorrow. So after you have a thesis, you must back it up with price action. So I want to see price action confirm my thesis. And this is a stock that I want to get very aggressive on because it has a lot of volume. So I could trade in and out of hundreds of thousands of shares in minutes if I really want to, or in seconds. So an opportunity like this doesn't come around too often. This is a sell the new setup, which is my second best setup that I trade. The first one is the first red day. And I was able to catch the entire thing live on camera. So let's go through it step by step. So this is being started at 8.04 AM. So as you can see, I took a small starter position on the stock. And if you notice here, the route is MIC. So our partnered up broker, Success Trader, their commission structure is 0.002 a share. But by using the MIC route, you get a rebate of 0.0025 a share. So if you subtract that from your commission, you get paid this much amount of money per share that you trade by using the MIC route. So essentially, you're getting to trade for free plus getting money on top of that. This is exclusive to success trader clients only. So let's get back to the video. So right now, I see the stock bouncing pre-market. And what this stock likes to do is it likes to bounce pre-market and then at the open, it likes to sell off. It likes to get people excited that the stock is going to run pre-market. But after trading the stock for so many days and so many weeks, I've learned its personality. I know that this stock is going to try to do a run pre-market. And then if it fails, I'm going to get aggressive on the stock, right? I'm going to get very aggressive because the stock tends to wash out at the open. The stock tends to tank at the open and that tank is a trap to go up. And depending on how that trap acts, then we'll see what happens.
What I'm looking for here is I wanna see the stock hold resistance here at 1520 and start to wash out under 15. If the stock breaks above 1520, I wanna cover a partial of my position for a small loss in case it goes to 16 or 17. And if it ends up breaking this 1490, $15 VWAP level, I wanna get aggressive on this trade. So let's see what happens. As you can see, I'm adding a little bit to my position as 1520 is topping out. And this stock on top, Nerve, is a stock that I was watching for a bounce to short. Uh, it didn't really get there, so later on in the video, I switch it to a five minute chart on Bed Bath & Beyond, so I have a better view of the entire trade. So as you can see here, I'm drawing my support lines. I know that if this stock breaks under 1455, there's pretty much gonna be no more support left on the stock until 14. So I just wanna give myself a visual representation of what the stock is doing. And as you can see, I am zooming out to the previous days to see how much room does this stock have to go down, right? So as of now, I know that 14 is a pretty solid level. So that's my target on this stock. If it goes under 14, great. But my target is around $14 for a stress-free trade on this stock. As the stock begins to go in my favor, I get a little bit more aggressive with it. Keeping in mind that if this stock breaks above 1520, I have to cover a piece of my position in case things go wrong. If it's a small loss, I can make it back. But if it's a big loss, I'm dead. Now the first test of VWAP here looks like it held. So I wanna be cautious. I wanna see what is it gonna do next. So the stock looks like it's about to reclaim 1520. Now what I wanna do here is I wanna take a piece of my position off on a dip in case things go wrong. So rather than buying the resistance and rather than covering right at the top, I wanna let it test, come back down, use that dip to cover, and then reassess my position. So let's see what happens here. As you can see there, I tried to cover some at 1525. I couldn't get it. Now, if you notice, the pre-market high of the day is 1515. So that is my complete emergency exit. If that breaks 1515, I got to e-break out of there. I got to get the heck out of here. But this move right here, oftentimes they might push it above pre-market highs, get everyone excited, get everyone to exit, get everyone to buy, and then bring it right back down. So let's see what happens here. So seller showed up at 1537. I like to see that right there. Let me go back. So a seller showed up at 1537 right there, 12,000 shares. I want to see that. I want to see sellers coming into these pops and selling into them. When I see that seller come in, I adjust my order to cover a little bit lower. Now I'm totally okay covering for a small loss in case the trade goes wrong and adding it right back once it goes in my favor. So ideally, I don't want to see this thing break 1550 pre-market because if it does, it's going to 16. So I am trying to mitigate my losses. I am trying to manage my risk here just in case things go wrong. If I have a small controlled loss, it is totally okay. I do not want a loss to balloon. So now you see a big buyer here at 1530 and some selling at 1533. So who's gonna win? Looks like the sellers won. So I covered partial of my position, 15, uh, 4, 1526, trying to cover some more on the dip. And again, if this just dips and tanks, I have no problem adding back short. And if this pops and pushes, I have no problem exiting my position. Now I covered some of my position, 
on this dip. And I wanna see what it does. Look, another seller just showed up. So here I try to cover a little bit more on the dip, just in case. So now I'm seeing that it's trying to bounce. I draw my line at 1550 and I give myself a clear area to exit in case I'm wrong. What I want to see here is I want to see this bounce fail and I want to see this thing break 1520. And if it does that, I'm going to add right back everything that I covered because at that point it is now a failed bounce. Let's see what it's going to do. Uh oh, now it's starting to come back down. I see it coming back down and now I want to add right back in. So whatever I exited, maybe even more than that, I want to get back in because now that 1520 resistance is now acting as resistance again. 1520 broke and now it's coming right back to be a seller. So now I'm adding right back again. And same thing as before, I want to see 15 and 1490 break. And when that happens, I will get aggressive on the stock. Again, I have no problem hitting the bid if it goes in my favor. I want to be able to add because right here, it just failed that bounce. This bounce, if correct, should have gone to 15, 50, and 16. Instead, there was sellers that showed up on this. And because there's sellers showing up on it, that gives me confidence. I'm seeing a big buyer here at 1506. I might have to hit him myself, I don't care. So let's recap. I covered my position for a loss on partial shares. If it went higher, I would have gotten out the rest. Instead, it failed and I added back. And now this entire move that started right here at this candle is about to be given back. So this gives me confidence. This tells me there are sellers on this stock and my thesis might be right. And because my thesis is right, I am okay sizing in. I am okay loading in. Add some more at 15.06. And remember, 15 and 14.90 break was my goal, was my target. I want to see it break support of 14.90 and 15. So I could feel confident, I could get aggressive, and let's see what happens. In a flash, we're at 14.90. At this point, I'm trying to add more. So my thesis was correct to be shorting here and adding when 1490 and 15 broke. They ended up faking people out, thinking, all right, it's gonna go higher. So took a small loss and I started aggressively adding back as my thesis was being proved again. So let's see what it's gonna do here. This is me taking a screenshot to MIC members to educate them on my trade live. 50,000 share bidder, 1488. Let's see what he does. Oftentimes, if you want to bid that much, you don't show your size because someone like me will just jump you. So that might be to prop it up, boom. They hit him and straight down. Now I'm getting aggressive again. Now I see that the trend is broken and this thing might actually break 1450 pre-market. So let's fast forward a bit. Now the stock is trying to bounce and what I wanna see here is I wanna see a fail at VWAP. I wanna see a test, 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 1495, 15 and fail. And if it keeps testing and keeps failing, I will keep adding. it. 
So the more times it fails, the more aggressive I get. Again, I want to see it under 1490s and $15. If it breaks above $15, I will use that same 1520 line to stop out. But if it stays under and it cannot reclaim 15, I am going to keep adding. And what was the thesis? The thesis is the sell the new setup. They're getting everyone excited pre-market and then at the open, I think they're going to dump it. They're going to dump it and then try to rebound it. And then if that rebound fails, that's going to be the money shot. So let's see what happens. Still going a little bit lower. The bounce failed. The bounce failed. So now this gives me confidence. I see 1470 support and I see 1450 support. If 1470 and 1450 breaks, this thing is going to melt down. So what I'm seeing here is lower high, lower high, lower high and fail. This is the exact thing that I want to see when I'm trading a stock like this. I want to see lower highs. I want to see fails and I want to see a meltdown, right? So right now I'm in 130,000 shares. I'm up about $45,000 and that's, that's, I'm not trying to trade to just make $45,000. I know it sounds crazy, but this is a trade that could be a potential six figure winner. So I want to be able to lock in profits on dips and recycle those back on pops. So let's see what happens here. And keep in mind, this is before the market opens. So there's still 30 minutes until the market opens. A lot can change. Remember, 1450 was the major support. So it only makes sense that's hovering around 1450 for a little bit. Tries to bounce. And now I want to see this bounce fail. I don't want to see it go above 15. And as the stock breaks 1450, I want to be able to lock in profits. I want to be able to take some off, to give myself a cushion, to give myself a padding in case this bounces aggressively at the open. If this bounces aggressively at the open, I want to have a profit cushion to protect myself. So the 1450 line just broke. Let's see what happens. And I'm not looking at my P&L here. I know it looks sick looking at $65,000 before the market opens, but I think that this could turn into a really big winner. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to trim some of my position. I'm trying to exit some of my position for a small win, right? So that in case the stock bounces, in case it goes crazy at the open, I will be able to attack back. And this is me taking a screenshot and educating MIC members live on this trade. I pulled up the five minute chart here to draw more areas of interest to know where to cover. It is not a coincidence that I'm using this resistance to cover. Resistance turns into support. And this is going to be my next cover area around $14. I am using the chart to determine my entries and exits. So let's see what happens here, guys. Trying to cover some more at 1437, didn't really get it. Market's gonna open up here in five minutes. I say, hey, I'm just gonna add back a little bit on this bounce, no problem. And my plan, my plan is remember what I mentioned, the stock usually pushes pre-market and washes out at the open. So if this stock washes out at the open, I want to be able to lock in half of my position so that in case it bounces, I have realized profits to pad me. And in case it takes more, so be it. At least I protected myself. So the market should be opening up here in three minutes. So let me go back and let me show you what I did here. So the market's going to open up in 20 seconds. What I'm doing is I'm setting fantasy orders. So I'm setting limit orders under the bid in case this stock washes out really fast at the open. I have open orders out to cover the position because sometimes these stocks move so fast that if we don't have an order set, we might not get it. So the market's going to open up in here one second and let's see if these orders fill. So I covered nearly half my position and locked in $41,000 in realized profits with another $40,000 in unrealized profits. Now, what I want to do here is I want the stock to bounce ideally towards 15, right? Because 15 was where it was rejecting before. I want this thing to bounce towards 15 and I want to reload everything that I covered. So I covered about 70,000 shares on that dip, right? Let's see what happens. So 
still trying to cover some more. And remember, if it tanks, I got no problem adding back. I just want to protect myself. So I locked in $47,000. So in case something goes wrong, I have a big padding to offset it. Now I'm starting to slowly add back in because I'm seeing that this stock is rejected. I'm seeing that the balance is failing. So I'm starting to scale back in. Now this ad was a little bit premature because I thought that it was gonna break the low of the day here. So I added back a little bit too quickly and that's totally fine because I have some realized profits and I have a plan on the stock. I was trying to cover a little bit earlier, but I ended up not being able to fill. So stay calm, stuck to my plan. And my plan told me that if this thing bounces, if this thing bounces, I am now okay scaling back into the position because the stock does the same pattern every single day. The stock is strong pre-market, the stock tanks at the open, the stock rebounds at the open, and then if that rebound fails, it is going to unwind. So I am slowly starting to scale back into my position. I'm not looking at my profits, I'm not looking at anything other than the fact that I want this thing to bounce towards $15. I want it to bounce towards $15 to get people excited. And then I want them to pull the plug on it. So let's see what happens. So because I locked in such large profits at the open, I am very comfortable and I am very confident that I have room in case things go wrong. If you notice, $15 is the resistance area here. So what it's gonna probably try to do is push towards 15, get everyone excited. And then if they pull the plug at 15, I'm gonna get comfortable, I'm gonna get confident, and I'm gonna get aggressive. So I ended up washing out to 1450. And remember, 1450 was the support from before. Remember, 1450. So that's gonna be a very that's gonna be a very big area of interest on this stock, right? So over here, I'm trying to cover some of my position to mitigate my risk and to make sure that I lock in some profits. Not sure if I'm gonna get it or not. But as you can see, I am using the weakness to cover my position. I am using the strength to add to my position and I'm just repeating it over and over and over again. Now in a perfect scenario, what I would like to see is I wanna see the stock push above 15. I want it to push above 15 to get everyone excited that 16, 17, 18 is coming and then I want them to pull the plug on it. So let's see what happens. And again, throughout this entire time, I am not looking at my profits. I am looking at the chart, I am looking at my plan, I am trying to trade the stock, not trade my profits. And because I locked in such large profits in the open, I'm not panicking, I'm not hesitating, I'm not worried. So if you find yourself struggling or you're not able to be patient, it's probably because you haven't locked in any profits. So I lock in profits on dips to be able to offset in case things go wrong. So remember, I wanna see a push towards 15 and I wanna see this thing slam right back down. I want everyone to get excited thinking that 16, 17, 18 is coming. And then I wanna see a massive death candle or a massive rejection or something to give me a signal that, hey, I'm right. Oftentimes, stocks need to heavily, heavily push to be able to come back down. Now, my plan is if this thing starts to break above 15, 20, I'll cut it off and I'll maybe lose a couple thousand dollars. That's not really the end of the world for me. This is a potential six-figure trade. If I lose five, 10,000 on a potential six-figure trade, that's fine. Now, here's the death candle. We're seeing that entire push got rejected. That entire push. So what we wanna see next is now we wanna see 1450 support break and take all the way back down to 14, right? So let's see what happens here. This is a death candle in my eyes. This is a signal that the stock is dead. Now, a full-size position for me would be around 200,000 shares on this stock. 
Now I'm in about 130,000 and I still have enough room to add about 70,000 more, but I just wanna take it slow for now, right? I wanna take it slow. I wanna see, I see that the stock is starting to play games. And because the stock is starting to play games, I don't wanna to get too aggressive with it yet. I have a pretty big position on, I wanna see it play through. I have locked in profits. I don't wanna to get too aggressive yet. Now, what we want to see is we want to see this 1450 level break, this 1440 level break, and then we want to see a break down to low of the day. So let's see what happens here. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the arrows from my five minute chart so it's a lot cleaner to see, but the arrows are still on my one minute chart. I just want to be able to see the chart a little bit cleaner. So again, 1450 and 1440, we want to see that break. If that breaks, that tells me that this stock is going to tank. Fourteen fifty and then fourteen forty. We need to see that break because if that breaks, everyone that bought at fifteen dollars is now underwater. Come on, fourteen forty. Now we're at fourteen thirty. So every single person that bought for this ramp is now stuck and underwater. This is the exact signal that I want to see. And as you see here, I'm gonna cover some at 1437 to lock in some profits in case it decides to bounce one more time to 15. And if it tanks, I have no problem getting back in. So using the dip to exit my size, Using the dip to give myself padding is what I'm trying to do here. So I noticed that the bounce is failing. So I'm trying to add back my position. I see that the bottom of that candle was 1421. So I want to see 1421 break and I want to see another test of 14 on this stock. So as the stock starts to bounce, I'm slowly scaling back into my position. I want to scale back in towards 1440, 1470 and 15 bucks. And if it fails, it fails, but I want to slowly scale back in because I'm noticing that the bounces are getting less strong. So remember 1421 was the bottom of that candle. So I want to see that candle break and I want to see this thing test 14 bucks. Slowly scaling back in on bounces. I've locked in $53,000 in realized profits. We're not a 30,000 waiting. I'm not worried right now. The stock is doing exactly what I thought. So it looks like the bounce is failing again. This is beautiful. It couldn't even bounce to view app. It's just failing. So now this is telling me that this stock is really weak. Remember, 1421 broke. What's next? 1410 is the low of the day. Can it break it? Boom. Now we're at the low of the day. I'm up $53,000 plus another $66,000 waiting to be locked in. Now, the thing that you guys have to know about trading size is you can't just cover hundreds of thousands of shares at you know, 1410, you have to wait for liquidity spots on the stock, whether it be whole dollars and a half dollars. And on this stock, $14 is a whole dollar mark. So I set an order to cover 70,000 shares, which is half of my position at $14. And the reason why I want to do this is because I know that that is the best spot to get liquidity on the stock. I need people to slam $14. I need stops to go off to be able to take off my monster position or else I'm gonna be pushing the stock up myself. So if trading size, look for key liquidity spots, you know, whole and half dollar marks to exit your position, right? So at this point, I ran out of locate. <laughs> so I'm sitting at the bid at $14 to cover half of my position because that's the spot that's gonna give me the most amount of liquidity. 
I need that liquidity to exit. I need people to stop out. I need people to slam the bid into my order. And that's pretty much the only place that I'll be able to cover a large portion of my size at the same price point. So what's gonna happen next? Come on, 14. The bounce is failing again. Come on, do it. Boom, 14. You see, I got that instantly. 70,000 shares executed in one second. It executed in one second because so many people were hitting the bid or stopping out or whatever that I got a huge liquidity zone to cover my shares. Now, I'm covering more and more on this dip. Locked in $116,000 in realized profits. There's still another $30,000 to go. So I'm just using this entire dip to cover my position. I'm covering and covering and covering and covering and covering into the panic. As people are panicking on this stock, as people are dumping it, I am using that as my opportunity to get out and lock in my gains. And if you look, it's only been 17 minutes until the market opened. This trade executed in 17 minutes. I'm down to my last 5,500 shares. And I'm just like, screw it. I'm going to take the money. So locked in $143,000. And I said, hey, if this stock bounces, maybe I'll take another scalp on it. So let's see what happens. Started to bounce. So I'm starting to slowly scale back in. I'm not gonna use 150,000 shares like last time, but hey, I might go up to 10, 20, 30,000 shares on this bounce. Ideally, it gets up to 14, 15, and 14, 17, but who knows? Notice the stock bounced over the same support line that I drew. That is why I covered there, and this is what we teach inside MIC. So I got about 10,000 shares on at a 1425 average. I would love to add around 1450. But hey, if this washes out, I'll just take the profits. It just. All right, well, now it started to pull back, so I'm deciding to just take my profits on the dip. 1410 is where I'm sitting. I'm not trying to get greedy. 15 cents is bad, not bad. And that's it, guys. That's $145,000 trading in just one day, trading the meme stocks. And yeah, let me show you what happened to the chart throughout the rest of the day. The stock ended up totally collapsing throughout the rest of the day. And I got out around 1390 and 14, and it went as low as 12 bucks. I could have made almost three to four hundred thousand dollars on this stock, but hey, I screwed up. It's not so bad when you screw up and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you enjoyed this live trading video, leave a like on the video and leave a comment on the video. And if you want to see more live trades from me, let me know. And if you're curious about my strategy and you want to learn how to day trade for yourself, all you got to do is go to myinvestingclub.com slash webinar and register for our free mentorship course. This is for non-MIC members only. You're going to see my strategies. You're going to see my live trades. You're going to see a lot of my process revealed to you live. And this course is only going to be available for a limited time only. So if you like this video, if you're curious about trading, if you want to get started with trading, watch my free mentorship course online, 100% free, no strings attached, and you'll see some more live trades from me. But in the meantime, please subscribe, please like, please leave a comment, I'll record some more live trades for you guys soon. Thanks.